the last time we talked, which was like a couple months now, a few months now ago. Oh, it was February 21st. I remember that mm -hmm. because um, February 22nd, I held my first sacred circle for the Patreon community. And as I welcomed them, I like burst into tears and that began this like spree of like crying every day for like eight weeks. I maybe missed like two or three days like in there. And all of that came out of our conversation last time around meditation and like basically your approach to meditation shifted something inside of me that like renewed my approach so that it was like there was no right or wrong way to meditate it was about the feeling of like holding space open for yourself and like just legit wanting to spend time with yourself the same as you would anyone that you loved and like that seems so simple and yet something opened inside of me and meditation suddenly made sense and i mm -hmm. accessed this like whole new place and as I did that, it was like all this energy was coming in such that I had to cry. I had to like, there was like stuff in there that was in the way <laughs> that like had to melt right. and come out. Um, yeah, it was like, it's been a powerful few months since we last talked. I guess that'd be like two and a half ish um, right. a time that like we've, we've been trying to connect and it just hasn't happened and so this space this elongated 10 weeks or whatever just like naturally formed itself and here we are today and i'm yeah, yeah. Bust, totally so thank yeah, you for and, last and, time and this time <laughs> <laughs> well you know as you think about it whenever you're talking about learning how to set, just hold space for yourself it's like you you have all this energy to do it for other people, regardless of how they show up. And I, and I realize you don't necessarily have a choice in the matter in terms of when the way they show up. But I'm saying even then, you're trying to work with it. You know, you're trying to sit there and listen to what they're saying. You're trying to gain a perspective about what it is they're talking about. You know, you're adjusting your body language. You're doing all this work. Well, why are we not? having that same drive and desire to do that for ourselves. Why, I mean, if anybody should we, we should be doing that stuff for is for ourselves because we're the ones that it's like being on a plane. Make sure you put your mask on first before you try to help somebody else, you know? Totally. So it's in the same sense with meditation, it's like you're you're taking that opportunity to really just listen, you know, to whatever is going on in the body. You know, the thoughts and all the nuances that's, that's happening as far as your processing and stuff like that. And you have no distraction. Yeah. You know, you have nothing outside of you tugging your attention to something else. You know, no one trying to interrupt that thought process to tell you, well, no, you should this, that and the other. You actually have free access to the, the real way in which you feel in any given moment, you know. We did like a, for integration, uh, we have cacao ceremony um, on Sundays from three to five. And um, we did a, a walking meditation and it was an extension of, the, you know, this idea of there only being one way you meditate. If you don't do it that way, then you're not meditating. Well, then that goes into the shame of, well, what's wrong with you? Because you can't sit still, you know? All of the above, yeah. So. Yeah, all the time. But now it gives you this opportunity to, to look at meditation from a much broader perspective where you can walk and be consciously connected to yourself. What's, you know, the, the, the environment in which you're in, you, you know, you become, you know, plugged in with nature, plugged in with the way your, you know, your, your foot is touching the ground, you know, feeling yourself almost like pulling the energy from the ground into your body around, you know, and you're just being one with self in that moment, you know, and whatever you may be experiencing. And if you miss that idea 
of the importance in with connecting with self, then what's the point of, of just setting still? Oh, I you know? would straight up torture myself trying to sit still because that's what I thought. Like that was the right way. This is how you met. I was trying to do it correctly instead of tuning into just the feeling, the relationship with self, like what you so beautifully elaborated on last time. But yeah. And what resonates with you is the other part of it as well. It's like you're going to be more apt to be into something that you really want to be doing, you know. And if you got all this distortion and stuff in front of it, it's like creating this issue with you being able to do something. But if it's like something you really want to be doing, which is, you know, even if it's just in the kitchen washing dishes or something and you hate, you know, most people don't really like doing it. But like if you could even take that into a meditative state, you know, being conscious of how the water feels on your hands, the way the soap feels in your hands, the way that the residue feels on the plate. And you you go into like this trance and then all of a sudden you forget the fact that you're washing dishes, you know, and you've also made it a practice of something that you didn't really like before, but now you've taken it and made it into something of an experience that's like not so you know, horrible anymore. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You, know, you find yourself in, in uncomfortable spaces. You attune yourself to being like, okay, I feel this thing coming up. You know, how is this, you know, affecting me? And, and, and is there quite possibly a message that something, that there's something being communicated to me through this feeling that, well, why am I why am I saying it's uncomfortable? Why why can't it just be just a different energy that I I don't I don't have a relationship with, you know? And you see, that's all being meditative. That's all mm-hmm. like being consciously aware of what's going on in that particular moment. But it's also giving you some more information in terms of how to approach what's happening to you, you know. <laughs> Totally. So, okay. So I, I'm, I'm remembering, and I, this was one of the main things that I've been thinking for 10 weeks that I wanted to tell you was like, when we got off the call last time that day, I probably sat there for like two or three hours total. And I was outside and most of the time my eyes were open, but I was doing what you're talking about. Like I was, I was being inside, like fully aware inside myself. So like mm-hmm. even just keeping my eyes open, being allowed like allowing myself, I guess I should say, to keep my eyes open was like a huge turning point. But anyways, the very, very (laughs) first moment that I sit to like, I want to meditate, like you said, like if you want to do it, you will. If you, if there's a reason for you to go in there and you want to go in there, then you'll find a way. And so I just, I had this like burning desire. I wanted to meditate and I sit to meditate. I close my eyes. I'm probably less than a minute in and this like vision, this like movie in my mind, like pops in and basically what it is, is I am finding a, can I like be really dark and morbid for just a moment? Yeah, 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 we're good. Yeah. Okay. So (laughs) I'm finding a blood trail and I follow the blood trail and I find my dog underneath the steps in my garage and she's been shot multiple times and she's under there and she's dead. And this is the vision that I get like a minute into meditation. And I open my eyes like instantly because like all that happens in like less than a second. But like I open my eyes and I said out loud and I thought this was the best part. It's like, this is why I fucking hate this is because when I close my eyes, I see shit I don't want to see. Why are you showing me this? And I got so mad for like a little bit, you know, that's not where it ends. But I I did what you had talked about as far as like, you know, if you were going to hold space for a client, for example, and they Mm -hmm. said that this is what they saw, would you just run away from them? Would you just like make them shut it down? Like, no, you would, you would sit with them and you would face their fear along with them. Like you would, you would do that. And I would. And so why am I not willing to face this fear with myself? Why am I not willing to hold my own hand 
and like walk into the shadow. And so I did, I took that, you know, like not necessarily that visual, but like went back into closed eye <laughs> meditation. I like got back on the horse and was like, right. you know, what is under this? Like what's really going on here? And mm-hmm. through doing that, it was, it was like that initial fear was cleared to reveal like an actual real fear that I, I was carrying in myself that mm-hmm. I was very actually worried about my physical safety. And I hadn't really acknowledged that. And mm-hmm. in that playing out, like it was like worst case scenario, what I was worried about, it was like having a nightmare inside my meditation. Yeah. And okay. as I went deeper into it. That was the very first experience. And I was like, wow. And then I sat there for two or three hours because lots of stuff came up. And I just mm. kept being with myself and oh, wow, like changed my whole life. That was, you know, 10 weeks ago and lots has unfolded since yeah. then. But like that first experience of like having a nightmare in meditation would have sent me out. You know, I'm not even going to mess with that for another year. <laughs> I can't take that. Right. Cool. Um, yeah. But yeah. So I just wanted to see like, I mean, I feel like I definitely got to the point of why I saw it, but if you have any words of wisdom around like really how to be with things that like it comes up and it hurts, it, mm-hmm. it's, it's painful. Like it hurts yourself to like be witnessing mm-hmm. these things that do rise up and there's, it's, it's an opportunity. And yeah, I wonder if you can speak to it anymore given you have way more. Yeah. I can use uh, just a, a personal experience of, of one that this just recently happened, and and this, mind you, if I can be, you know, open with saying it was in ceremony when it when this happened this past weekend, and of course we're we're setting with people who you know have very difficult things that surface as a result of them you know doing the medicine. Well, this particular situation was one where the in the in the efforts of trying to help the person it triggered something really really deep in you. Um, it was it, yes in me like it literally took me to a place where i had some trauma with you know and me having that rise up and literally consciously just listening to the dialogue of all the things that I wanted to do as a result of this thing being triggered in me. Um, but uh, but uh, there was this, this other aspect of myself along with it that was kind of having dialogue with it. You know, like, yeah, this this could be warranted to do in this particular situation, but but overall, is this going to be to your highest benefit to react in this way? You know, I mean, and it was, I mean, the body and everything was coming together to respond to this trigger, but like by me consciously having a relationship with just sitting with myself. You know, with just sitting with things that are very uncomfortable and and allowing the grace of it to just, you know, just be there. Like, you know, this doesn't have to define your experience. This doesn't have to be the narrative for what's going on. It can just be a passing thought. You know, you can just if you could just sit enough long enough with it it will pass. Yeah. It doesn't stay in the way that we conceptualize this idea of something, you know, taking too long. You know, there's a narrative to it. And if we set long enough to kind of let the narrative kind of play through our mind and then, then we see other things as a result of those thoughts, it's like, okay, now I can approach something differently, you know, but if we're so constantly moving and we don't sit long enough, that's we're always conscious reacting to things, you know, because we haven't even sit long enough to recognize that, okay, I don't have to approach this thing that way. I can actually approach this thing. You have options. You have choices that you can make. 
that otherwise you didn't feel like you could make. But when you sit with the thing and you and you feel the thing, it's almost like, oh, well, damn, <laughs> you know, I really didn't have to do this or that or, you know, it, it's not as strong as I originally thought it was. It's all about a perception that I had towards a thing. But once I let, you know, kind of sit with it long enough to realize that, then it's like, well, oh, well, shit, I've been making myself miserable all this time. And, I <laughs> and all I had to do was feel it. <laughs> you know, it's For like, like this long, like feel yeah. it so much. And there's a whole release. There's a, a whole different perspective waiting, like just on the other side of being with it. Yeah. As I sat with it, like I boiled it down to like, this is my worst nightmare, like legit, like as far as anything that could happen in the physical that would really tear me apart, this specific scenario hit it on the head. And then I was like, but why, why am I scared of that happening? And that answer came like immediately. And then in realizing that that's why I was actually physically scared, my, my grandpas who are like two of my guardian angels, like that's who I felt like was saying it to me, but basically that kind of loving source energy kind of presence said like, basically if anybody was ever going on their way to you, to hurt you, we would just give you the impulse to move. Yeah. You would know. Like, <laughs> duh. <laughs> And I totally was like, oh my gosh, like, of course, I already believe that. Like, I already believe in my own divine timing, perfect place, perfect time. Like, and right on the end of that was a further explanation that said, like, basically, like, and if something happened where, like, you found your dog like this, like, that pain would not be for nothing. Like, yeah, it's that we would never hurt you for no reason. Yeah. Like if right. there was just this oh, and it melted and I sat there for two or three hours after that. Yeah. And That's I never beautiful. had another nightmare in my meditation. Like once that right. laid itself out, like it's been pleasant, basically there've been little things, but nothing like that. Where Right. Well, you faced the, the biggest, the, you, you faced the thing that you thought was the biggest fear and you overcame it. Yeah. So all the other things after that, it's like, really? You know? Really? Oh, just that? Oh, that's easy. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Yeah. <sighs> Huge. And so yeah, it basically opened the floodgates of like, I am safe to feel anything. Yeah. And, and like anything can move through. And I have, I mean, those first like couple weeks, like. It was like all day, every day. Like I could not stop crying, like just crying all like <laughs> weeping and everything, happy, sad, mad, glad. It didn't matter. Like I was all over the place emotionally. Thank God I don't have to go anywhere um, because I could just <laughs> let it come out. And it did. And it eventually it like kind of stopped. And, and mm. I feel like like there, it was this process of like moving to this like almost new level of consciousness where fear right. is not nearly as much the dictator as it was back in this level of consciousness. Like fear, right. it's just, like you said, it's not bad. It's just different. It's just a different energy. Yeah. Like, what are you afraid of again? <laughs> like what? Cause no, there's no reason. Right. Like, no, unless a cheetah. Now, did it also like, did, did also did you notice like it opened your ability to be in touch with your sensations more yes like i am so much more in my body like inside mm -hmm. my physical body in the moment and it's almost like like i read in a in a book this morning an astrology book but basically the point was that you don't just want to meditate. You want that meditative state to like merge with your reality, with like you just your state yeah. of consciousness. Like it's not about 10 minutes in the morning. It's about like setting you up for having that pause and that presence all day, every day. So it's a lot like right. you said, like, like walking to the bathroom or folding the clothes or mm -hmm. like walking to the car to get in it and like putting my seatbelt on. It's like everything is, it's like my full self is like present and is living yeah. out these motions. And so every single 
everything that you do, every moment is a is an opportunity to be in that space of awareness and like consciously connected. And then yes, there's this separation from like the stimuli, the knee jerk response, the pause, the choice. Yeah. And like I said, whole new level, like of being in the world, basically. And, and it yes, also affects a huge part of that. Right. And it also just affects the way that you relay information to 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 the outside world as as well, because your body and everything else is connected to everything, yeah. you know, and your intentions and all that stuff become more clear and you start to align with things that, you know, resonate with that vibration that you want to have a little bit easier, you know, each time. And, and it doesn't become this thing where you just have to, well, I got to stop. And, you know, I got our 17 different things I need to be doing, but I got to stop and do this thing begrudgingly <laughs> that's supposed to help me. But it's like, <laughs> <laughs> and then it's like if I don't do it just you know then I, my whole day is not well you know uh, I got mad at my boss because I didn't meditate today <laughs> it's like you know right right what even like is you the point? Didn't what's the point yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like where's the relationship to yourself you know yes. where you're more connected to self yeah. you know and then these experiences aren't so isolated to you having to do this one thing in order for you to get this other thing you know if you're consciously in that state of awareness then you're always you know in a meditative state and you're always in a position to do something for your highest benefit you know a hundred percent and like I, I love how you put it of like, you know, you end up being really counterintuitive when you get all serious about it, right? Because like, what even is the point anyway? I